Good morning, folks. The new active region on the north is not the one in the bunch you walk up to with a smile to start a conversation. This is the one with RBF in the corner that doesn't like you before she meets you. The sunspot is spitting mad as it turns over the northeastern limb. Number of pops yesterday which look like the flickerings in the arching umbral fields above the sunspot group. And there is a plasma sputtering outflow at the leading south edge of the active region. This is ionized helium in 304 angstroms. The activity is not at high X-ray level yet, but the building B and C-class flare events are enough to move plasma and crackle as the active region is officially now on the Earth-facing half of the Sun. Eyes on it. Now recall from last week the double eruption day, one on the north and one due south of it as well. It was the southern eruption heading our way. The first one went up and to the north. The second one came out along the equatorial region with swirling trails behind it. The little filament and extended swirls impacted over about a 12-hour period yesterday and last night, leading to a KP4 geomagnetic instability event. That was what was expected if it had hit the day before, not a day late and a few dollars weak. Eyes on the sun, because that coronal hole exiting to the right should have its solar wind arrive here soon, and that almost certainly will produce the geomagnetic storm, hopefully staying at minor levels. We are going back in time with my favorite paper that cites one of my own co-authored by one of my favorite people at NASA. That paper was a bombshell, but so is the one today that cites it, a furtherance of the geomagnetic fluctuations in earthquakes arena, and with the mindset we took in our paper now six years ago. You'll read exceptionally similar verbiage in our 2015 paper as well. Up next, we're listening to the latest explanation for why their cosmology doesn't work. Apparently, now their physics gets to change over time. The physics at work in the universe today aren't the physics at work way back when, and I don't immediately know if this is sillier than dark matter or than not using the extra dust, plasma, and electrodynamics they've been finding. Folks, most often when we discuss the progress beneath our feet, we're talking about the large low shear velocity provinces, the internal Earth skeleton, and how the Earth is not just concentric sphere shells. But today, we're going to be focusing on the core. Now, it may not be readily apparent while we are discussing this one first, but it's a nearly magic discovery of the changing shape of molecules under energy. In fact, we've got two such studies today. Impossible quasi-crystals from the first nuclear test helped to rewrite what molecular geometry is in the universe. Take those last two papers and think about the inside of the Earth. And this is part of the reason they have to rewrite the world every time they look in a previously dark corner. And it's not just the solar noble gases, but 70 times the ocean's worth of hydrogen locked in the supposedly iron core, along with those noble gases. The internal skeleton, the chemistry, the waters below. We merely guess at what's really down there. Let's take a quick step over to the ionosphere, the ceiling of the global electric circuit where they are finally detailing the differences between solar flare and lightning-induced electron density changes. This not only helps with the cosmic ray and solar particle lightning correlation from chapter 5 of our book, but it helps elucidate how the flare excited particle currents while only being a waveform manifestation of the X-rays. And so last but not least, as we said yesterday, the Black Brandt 12 plasma release experiment went up, and while we can say for sure that the light show was not what many had hoped for in terms of widespread visibility, it was reportedly seen from Nova Scotia to Ohio to Cape Canaveral. Here's the silver lining. What many were hoping to visualize got an okay shot from the viewership. It may not have been the super visible one to you, but take this in. If you keep up with space weather from the sun and you live somewhere that does not see aurora, this site can be a hefty warning that something major is happening with the magnetic field and or with space weather. We greatly appreciate your support. Wind map's not cooperating today, so it's just shots of that angry star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.